So today we're talking about five things people forget when they're trying to decide between living in Virginia Beach or living in Norfolk. And we're starting right now. I talked to a lot of people that are moving to Virginia Beach or Norfolk, and they often are trying to compare these two cities to figure out which one is best for them uh, for when they choose to move to the area. But what I realized is that there are a lot of people that have a lot of misconceptions of each city, and they might think that they need to live in one or the other. So these are some common mistakes that I hear people talk about when they're trying to compare uh, these two cities as to whether or not to live in one or the other. So number one is misunderstanding understanding what each city provides in their city resources. For example, Virginia Beach is well known for having well-funded parks. They have hundreds of publicly funded parks. They also have rec centers in Virginia Beach. So if you're a resident of the city, you can go to any of the rec centers sprinkled all through the city uh, and go, go there for just over $100 a year per person, which is incredibly low and much less than places like the YMCA, et cetera. So the city of Virginia Beach has a lot of things that uh, you pay for in your tax dollars that go to just helping the uh, the lifestyle of anybody that lives in the city. Norfolk is known for a lot of great things. They have great culture. They have great houses. They have a nice downtown area. Now, a lot of things in Norfolk that, that the city pays for might also go to things like renovating old buildings, like the Chrysler, Chrysler Hall that is going to be renovated res relatively soon, as well as uh, money towards flood management mitigation, which is a, a significant problem more so in Norfolk than there uh, than it is in Virginia Beach. Other things are like, you know, renovating or preserving uh, old elements of the city or streets, etc. that, you know, because of the age of Norfolk, uh, they have specific things they have to focus on compared to Virginia Beach. So when you do plan to move to one of uh, Virginia Beach or Norfolk, make sure you consider uh, what those cities provide you as a new resident or person living in the city. That leads me to number two, which is people often forget the cost to maintain houses in Virginia Beach or in Norfolk. What I mean is that Virginia Beach has a lot of houses built in the 50s and 60s. They also have a lot of houses that are newer, like in the 80s through the like even new construction, 2000s and new construction. So that leads to newer you know, houses, but less old house problems. Now, how does Virginia Beach in the 50s and 60s still have those things? For example, I've mentioned cast iron piping a lot of times before. Uh, that is a big expense to replace uh, going to the street, you know, the, the sewer lines, the water lines, you know, older electrical panels, you know, older uh, plumbing systems. Those are old things that you find in older Virginia Beach houses, which you'll find mostly in the northern section uh, of Virginia Beach. But uh, in Norfolk, it is a different level. Mostly, you, a lot of times people want to move to Norfolk because of specific parts of town. Ghent, uh, the west side of, of Norfolk, like Larchmont. Uh, those are those are neighborhoods that have like the old colonial style houses, craftsman style houses, like built in 1920, 1940, 1918, you know, that kind of a thing. So because of that, though, there are specific issues that come up with those types of houses. Namely, the plumbing electrical systems are still a problem there, but also things like you've got a basement, which in, might include a sump, sump pump in Norfolk, because uh, that is the only primary place that really has any spot that has a basement in Hampton Roads. And so you'll find more upkeep uh, involved with basements. Sometimes you'll see asbestos in random spots in these older older houses in the crawl spaces, for example. More unconventional uh, heating systems like oil uh, you might find more so in Norfolk. Baseboard heat becomes way more common uh, in uh, Norfolk. You'll see some in Virginia Beach too. Sometimes the foundations may become more compromised in some spots of town. But in Norfolk, you'll also see things that aren't really problems, but they look like it. For example, cracking in the walls, you'll see in a lot of these older, large, you know, colonial style houses that might have been an indication of a settling issue in the past, but may have stopped and is not uh, an issue now. That is not to say that, that all of, of cracking is not a problem. You guys got to talk to some inspectors to find that out, but you'll find that sometimes there's some false alarms there. In addition to that, with big houses, you'll find lots more issues with cost to heat, not as much insulation you know, in the, in the attic or in the walls. Uh, so these types of things can add to the ongoing monthly costs of maintaining a house in Norfolk compared to Virginia Beach. That is not to say that if you do buy an older house in Virginia Beach, you'll still have a lot of these same issues, just not to the same degree that you might find it in Norfolk. However, the reason why people love Norfolk compared to Virginia Beach is how the city feels, which is my number three thing is how the cities feel, figuring out the differences between those two. Norfolk and Virginia Beach are almost like two completely opposite vibes. One, Virginia Beach is like suburbia. It's like strip malls, big box stores, uh, a lot of random neighborhoods. They're all scattered all through the city. 
which is great because it adds functionality. It adds, you know, a lot of people that want to live in Virginia Beach for the school systems, they have access to lots of essentials in a very easy drive distance for most places in Virginia Beach. You've got primary shopping centers within, you know, 10 to 15 minutes from anywhere just about in the most of the parts of Virginia Beach. But at the same time, there's not as much of an identity uh, in Virginia Beach as opposed to Norfolk. Virginia Beach's identity is more so, I would say, beach in nature, which is great, but most of the city doesn't really have things that make it you feel like you're in nature or feel like you're in the beach, uh, on the beach, because those are more usually coastal things. But once you go, come off of the beach or off of the, co the coastline, about a mile, two miles, you're gonna see a lot of houses, a lot of strip malls, a lot of the same thing over and over again, but just in different, built in different time periods. The parks do help with that as those are scattered across. But for the most part, most of Virginia Beach is a lot of suburbs and you'll find that there's kind of a lack of, a, of an identity, uh, a strong identity through the whole city that you might find different in Norfolk. Norfolk has the colonial uh, element. It has the old house style, the old walkable neighborhoods like in Ghent, Colonial Avenue, Collie Avenue that had the nice shops, the mom and pop places. Uh, it doesn't feel as commercial commercialized as you would think uh, it feels like in Virginia Beach. Um, so older houses, real nice streets, lots of trees, well-developed neighborhoods that you'll still find those things in Virginia Beach. It's just not the same, mostly because of how the houses look and how the buildings look. It's just an older, older uh, city. Now, and there are parts of Norfolk that are you know, kind of stale in a sense, like a lot of parts on the eastern side that have nice neighborhoods in some spots, but it's more functional housing over there and you just don't see as much of a really vibrant area. It's just a lot of old strip malls that almost feel like uh, old parts of Virginia Beach in some spots. So it's not all glamorous in Norfolk, but a lot of the spots in Norfolk that really have that vibrant uh, cultural element, those older houses are on the western side. But the big thing people want in Norfolk is that cultural atmosphere uh, that you find in Norfolk that you don't really find as much of in Virginia Beach. Another mistake people make when they're trying to decide between cities is they feel like they have to live in one city or the other if they work in that city. So for example, let's just say you live in Colorado and or another state and you got a job offer and you're considering taking that job in Virginia Beach. Well, because Virginia Beach is like the main city or the primary city of Hampton Roads, it's easy to think, well, I need to make sure I, I live close to where I'm working or in Virginia Beach because it's like Virginia Beach working, Virginia Beach living. People often associate where their job is going to be with where they might need to, to live. So they focus on the same city for both. One thing you have to realize here is that the cities here are right next to each other. You can start in Norfolk, drive to Chesapeake and then Virginia Beach in a matter of 15 minutes, and you don't realize you've driven from each city to the other. Uh, they are all connected, as well as places like Suffolk, Portsmouth. Uh, they all are blended together, and you'll notice differences over time as you drive, but for the most part, they do have a lot of very close similarities to them, especially in the places that they connect. So you don't have to live in Virginia Beach and work in Virginia Beach. You can live in Chesapeake, but you can also live in Norfolk, which is what people often do if they want to have a certain cultural atmosphere of living in Norfolk, but they often will commute over to Virginia Beach, which leads me to the next one, which is having proper expectations of traffic in Virginia Beach or Norfolk. So you'll hear a lot of people here complain about traffic. It's not actually as bad as people here make it out to be most of the time, especially if you live in a big city now or a city that's known for traffic. Houston is a good example. Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, and those big cities that have bad traffic, those areas are much worse than here. What I've realized and, and distilled down, the biggest issue with traffic here is the the expectation of being able to get somewhere in 15 minutes and taking 22 or 23. It just takes longer than you might expect because uh, of unplanned traffic that happens randomly because the roads here are extremely windy in some spots. A lot of uh, stoplights, stop and go, just things that allow for more frustrations on the road that lead to accidents. If it rains a lot, you'll see a lot of accidents on the road blocks, uh, you know, major roadways that, you know, if you had a drive that might take 15 minutes, it might take you a bit longer to get there because of these random things, because the roads just weren't designed for so many people in a lot of parts of, of Norfolk and Virginia Beach. So you'll see, if you're looking at the map in Virginia Beach and Norfolk, there's Norfolk and Virginia Beach. You'll see that Norfolk and Virginia Beach have two primary interstates. Interstate 64 going north and south, but it's really 64 east and west, but it's in this case north and south. And then 264 that goes all the way across uh, to the beach and also over to, into Norfolk. Those two cross. It's like the belt of Virginia Beach and Norfolk. Now, the further you are away from those two roads, the longer it's going to take you to get to 
place to place. So if you go on the south and southeastern sections of Virginia Beach, you'll notice that these are all just windy highways or small roads in neighborhoods. So it leads to traffic lights. It leads to stop and go. It leads to a lot of this random things that take more time in your commute. Getting from here down in the south part of Virginia Beach all the way up into like Norfolk, for example, that can take you 40 minutes you know, or 45 minutes, 35 minutes, uh, and especially in, in high congestion areas because you have to drive all those all through, whether you're, you know, like a few side roads up to a couple of the main roads, Holland Road, Princess Anne Road. Eventually it takes you over to the interstate in 264. But once you get off 264, then you've got to get out of there through the, uh, the uh, congestion of Norfolk, which if you're on the west side going through Ghent, these areas over near Lambert's Point and Larchmont, those are just, they can be congested. And also in the center part of Norfolk, which is, there's a large gap between 264 and 64 that just leads to a lot of roadways, a lot of stop and go. So if you're on the extremities of Norfolk, like on the edges, like you know, in Ocean View, or on the western side, in the nooks and crannies over on the western side, it's going to take you a long time uh, longer than you might expect to get to Virginia Beach or even other parts of Norfolk for that matter uh, because you have to drive through all these side roads to get to where you need to be. So if you have any more questions about living or relocating to Norfolk and Virginia Beach or Hampton Roads, this is what I do. I love helping people relocate to the area. I have my contact information in the description. You can email me, call me, or text me at any point and I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate to the area. And I will see you on the next video.